All right, man, peace. So world-famous NBA basketball players LeBron James and Kevin Durant have recently found themselves caught up in a controversy due to some statements that they've made pertaining to the president of the United States, Donald Trump. In a feature that has been produced by LeBron James in which he and Kevin Durant are riding in the back of an Uber car driven by one of the lead ESPN analysts, Kerry Champion, they responded to some of her questions regarding America's current state of affairs racially and politically by once again trying to perpetuate their one-sided verbal assault on Donald Trump. If you guys have been following the series of videos that I've made pertaining to that topic over the last year, I've stated that LeBron James is focused on getting Donald Trump involved in a back and forth. Donald Trump has yet to give in to LeBron James's yearning for attention. And it's very, very clear that LeBron is still set on getting Donald Trump into that volleying of verbal barrages so that he can build up his woke points. <laughs> I told you guys that LeBron James is trying to take over for Colin Kaepernick as the lead woke athlete and the best way to do it is to get involved in a verbal back and forth with Donald Trump. This has led some anchors on many of the conservative news stations to allege that LeBron James should quote unquote stick to basketball. Now, I'm on record as stating that far too much of an onus is placed on the opinions of athletes and that professional athletes are not leaders, but they do have the right to state their views. But seeing as you hold sway over millions of fans, you also should expect that many of these top news stations are going to give you some of the attention that you think you want, and they're going to do things to insult you. So to whom much is given, much is required. Once you step in the ring, you can't get frustrated when punches get thrown back. But anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. You mentioned Muhammad Ali, which I thought was interesting. And you guys are talking about hate and criticism. We are at a watershed moment in this country. Yeah, for sure. I told you guys early last year when I started to make many of these videos about these woke athletes. They've turned Muhammad Ali into a patron saint for them. And they, they have no idea what Muhammad Ali was really about, what he stood for or the movement that he associated himself with. Earlier in this interview, LeBron James states that Muhammad Ali went to jail for three years for coming against the U.S. government in defense of his quote-unquote religion. That is not true. Ali never went to jail for three years, and I'm not trying to quibble with LeBron. My point being is this. When you're someone of LeBron James' stature and you start speaking on historical figures, once you step outside those boundaries of Speaking about sports, you better know what you're talking about. Once again, I'm not one of these guys that says an athlete does not have the right to speak his views or his perspectives on whatever. But when you're an athlete that is as pronounced and as elevated as a LeBron James, you better make sure that you're well versed in what you're talking about. Because they are going to nitpick you and it's no disrespect to LeBron James. He doesn't have the foggiest idea how America is run. Not the foggiest. And to be quite frank with you, I'm not even sure that many of his statements against Trump are even sincere. And we're going to see why I state that later on in this interview. Because he's going to gesticulate with his hands in a way that would seem to imply that I'm saying certain things, but overall I'm in the know. So let's see what, what goes on here. And we cannot deny that we are um, very divided, especially in the political arena. Yeah, for sure. Warriors said, if we had an invite, we're not going to the White House. LeBron well, re well, remember, the Warriors are a woke team. Their coach is woke. Their lead players are woke. All woke means that you're a loud mouth trying to push every liberal agenda on the board. Meaning what? Quote, unquote, racial equality, which just equates to white man, give me a hug. Uh, female supremacy, homosexual supremacy, etc. I've already gone into how Steve Kerr has ties to the CIA through his father, who they claim was just, just a teacher in the Middle East who got killed. Um, it is what it is, whatever. Those of us who pay attention know that, that that's the cover story. But when we go even further, Joe Lacob, the owner of the Golden State Warriors, is a homosexual, allegedly. So... We know that 
any top brass in the NBA that are living those alternative lifestyles are not going to like Donald Trump because of many of his reforms. And I'm already on record as stating as a so-called black man, all these presidents are pretty much the same. They do not deviate from each other anywhere near as much as the media would like you to believe. They're all basically just secretaries of the sub-corporation known as the Corporation of the United States of America. Really the Corporation of Homeland Security. Okay? Donald Trump has a job to do, which is to make sure that he can pay back the debt to the Federal Reserve as much as he can. It's the same debt that every other president has to be concerned with. And he will dispatch the U.S. military to try to get back the natural resources that he needs to appease the Federal Reserve, which is a, basically a collection agency for the international bankers. That's it. That's all it's about. All this other stuff is nonsense that, they, that they're talking about. And black people allow themselves to get caught up in all this emotional bullshit, all these mirages and smoke screens. And you call the president a bum. Yeah, straight up. straight up. How do you describe the climate for an athlete with a platform nowadays that want to talk about what's happening in our world? Well, the climate is hot. The number one. No, the climate is not hot. That's bullshit. The climate was hot back in the 60s. Right. That's back when the climate was hot. The climate was hot for Muhammad Ali. The climate was hot for John Carlos and uh, so on and so forth. It was hot for those men. It, it's not hot for, for, for LeBron James. As a matter of fact, 90% of the liberal media have his back. ESPN will have his back. Um, you're going to have the conservative uh, news networks like Fox that will come against him. So no, the, the environment is not hot for LeBron James. He's not living in an atmosphere where he has to be scared to speak his mind, most of the media outlets are going to have his back. They love this because it gives them more to talk about. So that's bullshit. And once again, his corporations, his sponsors like Nike are behind him. Why? Because they believe that Donald Trump is, is uh, costing them money. That is why LeBron James was trying to assist Hillary Clinton in getting selected or elected to the White House. All right? There's no disrespect to LeBron. But when they say stick to basketball, the reason why they could tell him that is because he's not well versed in what he's talking about. He's emotional. And that's not really a surprise because when you look at his at his background and the environment that he came from, it's not really a surprise that he's so damn emotional because he doesn't really know what he's talking about. Job in America, the point of person is someone who doesn't understand the people and really don't give a fuck about the people. When I was growing LeBron James, there's no disrespect, brother. Can you name a president that gave a fuck about the people? Do you think that Barack Obama gave a fuck about the people? Barack gave a fuck about homosexuals and lesbians. Because he's a homosexual, allegedly. And his wife, who, who the hell knows what the hell Michael Obama is? Could be a man, could be a damn <laughs> lesbian, could be an alien, could be a cyborg. Who the hell knows? what Michelle, a.k.a. Michael Obama, is, allegedly. Um, but we know for a fact that um, in LeBron James' lifetime, there has not been a president that was for the people. It's not the president's job, really, to be for the people. It's his job to make sure that America pays back as much of the debt as possible to the international bankers. And the president gets a cut. That's what, that's what you call Keynesian economics. That's what that's always been about. It's always been about the international bankers taking the president aside and saying, look, it's for your benefit that we have a debt-based, credit-based economic system, and we're going to give you a cut. All these presidents retire as billionaires, all of them, okay? They all get taken care of for the rest of their life. There's none of them that's out there worried about you, all right, especially as a so-called black man. If you're a so-called black man caught up in this, po in this political shit, you're a buffoon. Straight up and down. A lot of these pro-black dudes, oh man, uh, yeah, LeBron's down for the call. Look, all you got, look, you, you dudes that's caught up in this political shit, you lost in the sauce, man. All right? You lost in the damn sauce. Once again, if you really was trying to change the American system, you'd be telling them to get rid of the Federal Reserve, which is not going to happen anyway. There were like three jobs that you looked 
for inspiration or you feel like these were the people that can give me life. It was the president of the United States. It was whoever was the best in sports. And then it was like the greatest musician at the yeah. time. Now listen to what LeBron said. He said there was there were three basic people of fame that he looked to to quote unquote give him life. You know why he needed those three personages to give him life? Because he didn't have a dad. That's why I called the LeBron James story probably the greatest story in history. Right. For someone to get to the level of prominence that he's in and come from where he came from, the brother deserves nothing but accolades. But um, <laughs> his reach is not long enough for what he's trying to grasp a hold of. There's nothing against him. I give the brother all due honor and respect for what he's achieved. But he's not qualified to try to galvanize the people against this system. Not because the system is correct, but because he's not informed enough to know how to attack the system because he doesn't know what the system's real purpose is. It's nothing against the brother, all right? For his fanboys who are going to try to, you know, with their little low-level thinking, try to go back and forth. I don't have time for the dumb shit, all right? There have been no good presidents in LeBron James's life. So to try to say that Donald Trump is necessarily any worse or better than any of the other ones is foolishness. When LeBron James was born in what, 84, 85, whenever year he was born, Ronald Reagan was president. Ronald Reagan was one of the worst men of the last 40 years. This man brought in Reaganomics. He introduced the crack epidemic. Uh, he, he, he really instituted heavily the prison industrial complex. One of the great drug czars. For those of you who, who are interested or understand the MK Ultra program, heavily involved in sex slave trafficking, allegedly, um, presided over many snuff pornographic films, allegedly, heavily interested in bestiality, allegedly. All right, please, again, one, everything I'm saying is alleged, okay? <laughs> All right, after that, it was George Bush Sr., CIA czar. Uh, one of the Svengali's who orchestrated the assassination on John F. Kennedy, allegedly. Uh, drug runner, allegedly. Thief, liar, Luciferian. Uh, member of Skull and Bones. A, a scion of the criminal Bush family that helped finance the Nazis, allegedly. Then you have William Jefferson Clinton, pansexual. Um, brought in the three strikes rule. Amplified the prison industrial complex. Uh, ran a cocaine cartel out of Arkansas. Like, who, who the fuck was you looking up to, LeBron? No disrespect, brother. <laughs> no disrespect. The only difference between Donald Trump today and these presidents that LeBron is talking about, he looked to for inspiration, is that he knows more about the president now than he did back then because of, of how vast the media is. That's the only difference. And to be quite frank with you, I, I agree with many of the things that Donald Trump has done. He banned the transsexuals. Um, he, stopped, uh, he stopped allowing these whores to use their job to, to pay for their whore pills. I like some of the things he's done. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can kick rocks. All right? You can kick rocks. Um, on the flip side, Donald Trump is, is also involved with much of the uh, pedophilia rings throughout the entertainment industry. He's closely associated with Jeffrey Epstein of Pedophile Island. I believe the island's called Little St. James. You can look all this stuff up. Look, man, I don't get caught up with these different uh, personalities and these characters that they put forth on television. They put these people up, they put these people in front of the camera to get low-level people all excited and there's no disrespect the masses of people they consider low-level they call them useless eaters okay they have people like lebron james out there who is boule lebron is boule he has the boule sphinx tatted on his chest yes he is boule okay? his job is to act as an intermediary okay so and the, the chief athletes of lebron james's time michael jordan and magic and mike tyson all these guys their job is to be minstrels, man. You're not supposed to look at them as leaders. Like when you become an adult, you know, like Paul said, you know, when I was a child, I thought as a child and I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
when you're a child, there are athletes that you like. When I was a child, Michael Jordan and Jerry Rice and um, Roy Jones and you name it, Barry Bonds, Ken Griffey Jr. But when you become a grown man, you can respect a man for not, number one, for his talent, but for perfecting his gifts. But when you become grown, you don't hold those people in that type of esteem anymore. And we have to stop promoting idolatry like that. You, you never thought you can be them, but you can grab inspiration from. I feel like I can be, you know, if it was a neighborhood African-American cop and he was cool as hell, come around. You know, I feel like I could be him. It's easy to be. Yeah, it's All that stuff is great, but what we have to start promoting, especially in so-called black community, is, is the father. All right? Respecting the regular person. And to not put these athletes on a pedestal as leaders. You respect them for working hard at their craft and perfecting their gift. That's a great thing. That's not a good thing. That's a great thing. They provide entertainment for people. They can look at it and say, wow, look at what this person can do. That's nice. But then the TV gets turned off and you have to, you have to address your real life and your real life situation. Your number one hero as a, as a boy should be your father. Your number one hero should be your father. It's not supposed to be uh, some basketball player on television. I could be him, but I never felt I could be the president of the United States, but I grabbed inspiration from that. And this time right now, with the president of the United States, it's, it's at a bad time. And while we cannot change... There's no disrespect. I don't think that, th that this society is at a bad time at all. When you look at what's going on economically, America is... is in a very good position economically. Okay? It's time for the black man to turn off the TV for a moment and focus on what he needs to do to make himself a better person and climb up out of that woke rabbit hole. Once again, if you hate this society so much, we could do two things. We can revolt or we could leave. But complaining and begging the Caucasian man for equality, I'm sorry, sir, that is not manhood. I don't respect that. I don't respect that. So, what comes out of that man's mouth we can continue to alert the people that watch us that listen to us as this is not the way when we're talking about leadership and what's going on in our country and brother no disrespect you don't know the foggiest thing about leadership Kevin Durant and you're another brother who are, look I give you credit you came out of a single mother home out of a rough environment, but by your own definition, you've never faced real hardship because from the time you was 11 or 12, um, you were highlighted as a potential pro. Nothing against you, but you're the last person that should be speaking on leadership. You have no leadership qualities whatsoever, brother. And then it's no disrespect. You're a phenomenal athlete, a great basketball player, but you can't even lead on the basketball court. How the hell are you going to talk about leading in society? All right, I'm just being real. I know certain people might think that my statements are harsh. You have to make harsh appraisals when we're talking about real issues. Okay? And again, I'm not one of these people, oh, they shouldn't be talking. But once you start talking and you have the level of sway and influence that they have, you have to expect people to address your comments. Because if they're not informed, people are going to come and they're going to dissect your comments, as they should. Because if, they're work if, if you're working for Fox News and you have a strongly conservative bent, and you see a LeBron James and a Kevin Durant, people with millions of followers on Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat, wherever the hell platforms they're on, you're going to say, if we, if we leave these comments unchecked, they can affect and sway how people think. It's all about leadership. And I learned that playing basketball. You know, I learned a lot of life skills from playing basketball. You need that power. Brother, look, I'm happy that you utilize your ability as a free agent to leave the team. But you look real silly talking about the leadership skills that you learn playing basketball. You just do. You haven't displayed the foggiest idea of how to lead on a basketball court. You really haven't. That's why you came to Golden State. People, you need to, you know, encourage people. And that's what builds a great team. And I feel like our team as a, as a country is not ran by a great coach. It's not even a surprise when he says something. It's not even surprising. It's like laughable. It's like it's that's laughable. Bad. It's laughable and but it's, it's scary. But it's also scary right, because it right. shouldn't be nothing. No, you know what's laughable and scary, Kerry Champion. The fact that you can make money and take advantage of two affluent black men 
so-called black men like LeBron James and Kevin Durant, you could drive them around and you can increase your profile as you liberal black women always do. You always uh, use the simple minded black man to increase your profile because that's the main way that you're going to get your profile increase is when the black man helps you. But then Carrie Champion can come behind the so-called black man's back, just like her friend Jamel Hill, and state that she prefers to date white men because it's easier to date white men than it is black men. That's what she said. All right, brothers, that's what Carrie Champion said. Just like Jamel Hill talked all that pro-blackity black shit and came back and said that black men are the white people of black people. Or I should say she co-signed that statement. So basically she said it because she co-signed it. Carrie Champion is the same person who tried to rake Floyd Mayweather over the coals when he was on their show back when um, back when he visited the Sports Center set. Carrie Champion teamed up with her Caucasian male co-star David Lloyd, I believe his name is, and they tried to rake Floyd Mayweather over the coals for domestic violence shit that had happened seven years before. But meanwhile, Carrie Champion had been harassed, cyber-stalked by an associate of Howard Stern's named Artie Lang, who told her that he wanted to act out a slave sex fantasy with her. She never responded. She didn't make an official statement stating that she rejected his sentiment that black women have been disrespected by Caucasian men like this for years. She never said none of that publicly. But when Floyd Mayweather came on SportsCenter, she was drilling him about so-called domestic violence shit from years ago. And now she's jumping on the liberal bandwagon to use LeBron James' simple ass and Kevin Durant's even simpler ass to try to jump down the woke rabbit hole. You see what I'm talking about, brothers, when I talk about this bullshit? To your racist comments. Right, right. I shouldn't be numb to your behavior when I hear people talk. Well, you know what? I shouldn't be numb to them bad weaves you wear, but I'm numb to it about black men with money they think that that privilege makes you numb to the experience and that you don't know what it means i don't care how much money you have you're still a black man and you understand the play look at her patronizing and pandering to these two fools you know why <laughs> you know why the liberal black woman knows that she could do this brothers because she knows that a lot of these pro-black men they love the idea of unity with the so-called black woman. Like these, you got these liberal black women, they run all over the internet talking about where are our brothers and all this other shit. You know what that spells out to me when I see those type of comments? This is a broad who can't keep a man and save her fucking life. Now she wants to jump on the internet and complain about how come she can't keep a man. Because believe me, if you were a good person, you would have a man. You know why you don't have a man? Because you're a piece of shit. I've said that before. And, it, and it's no, I don't, I don't say it to be disrespectful. Because you have a lot of men that are a piece of shit too. They don't know how to conduct themselves appropriately. They don't understand loyalty and moderation and respect for themselves and for others. Things of that nature. So to make a long story short, the pro-black thing is a big hustle. Because you have a lot of black men trying to use the pro-black thing so that they can become a professional side dude. Like the black woman is God niggas. Why are they doing that? Because they want to be professional side dudes to all these silly, simple-minded black women. Some of them have a man already. Some of them don't. It doesn't matter to the black woman is God, guys, because they want to be a side nigga to about five broads. When if we had an actual culture, every so-called black man could have four, five, six wives. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be if you had a strong culture. Now in the deculturalized environment that we live in, you're lucky if you find one woman who's good enough to be a wife who can understand and comprehend order. Okay? So, I just noticed little things like that Miss Carrie Champion trying to patronize these two guys sitting in the back. And by the way, for the people who claim that when black men get famous, they give a white women, LeBron James is probably the most famous black athlete in the world. He's married to a black woman. All right? That's what I know. As, I, as I've stated, probably 60-70% of famous black men are married to black women. When you look at the famous black women, and this goes back all the way to people like Josephine Baker and um, Lena Horne and Diane Carroll. Uh, what's her name? Diana Ross. All these broads. White men, white men, white men, white men. Okay? That's how it's always been. 
that shit about the black man getting famous and hunting after white women, that was put forth by the white man's media in the 40s because he got scared about the so-called black man running through his women once he got low fame. That's where that sentiment comes from. Now, now do you see um, black men dealing with non-black women more or at a higher level once they get a level of fame? Of course, because the pool gets larger. The pool of women that approach the black man will get larger. But seeing as the pool of women is so large, still, the so-called black man has a propensity to deal with the so-called black female. And looking at the average so-called black female's conduct, she should count herself lucky. Okay? I know certain people are not going to like that. I don't give a shit. Oh, well. I said that a long time ago, one of my first videos. Nobody treats their female better in context with her conduct than the so-called black man does. People might get mad at that, act shock. how could you say that, please? When you look at how these other women of the other races, especially outside of America, are treated, you got <laughs> women in, in, in the Middle East getting their heads chopped off for looking at another man. Go read about what happens when one of these uh, females in, in Iran or Iraq or Saudi Arabia decide or India decide that they're not going to marry the man that their parents told them to marry they get acid thrown in their face they get stoned meanwhile you got bros running around he out here with five niggas talking about I don't know who the daddy is get the hell out of here a black man with a bunch of money and having a crib in Brentwood and having the word nigger spray painted over my that's crazy gate. yeah LeBron how's that case going brother Speaking of that, you still haven't found the perpetrator yet? You mean tell me you live in Brentwood in a gated community. Every house on the block has a security camera and you haven't found a person that spray painted nigga on your front gate. So we, we, we almost a year after the fact and they haven't found the person and you got no leads, no clues, no nothing, huh? And you still pushing that lie. Look, brothers, this dude, LeBron James, is he's way down in the woke rabbit hole. And I saw somebody ask me in the, on the Michael Smith, Jamel Hill video that I did, what is a rabbit hole? And one of the brothers answered very, very well. Let me just say this. All a rabbit hole is, is a portal. It's a portal from the matrix into the real world. Okay? Or from the real world into a world of your own making. That's what a rabbit hole is. Like if you ever watch Alice in Wonderland... When she first got to, how did she first get to Wonderland? She had to follow the white rabbit, right? She had to go down the rabbit hole. For you brothers who understand what you're watching, when you watch the film 8 Mile with the MK asset known as Eminem, what did they name him? B-Rabbit, right? Because he was the white boy. He was going to lead hip-hop down the rabbit hole. From the time that he came into hip hop, he was sent there to cause chaos and bring confusion. They utilized that uh, that other asset, um, Dr. Dre. Okay, that's all a rabbit hole is. So like for another example, when you watch The Wizard of Oz, how did Dorothy get from the black and white world to the world of color? Oz, she got stuck in the vortex, which is what the um, the tornado symbolized. Took her from one world to the other world. The white rabbit is a symbol of going from one world to another world. Okay? Like they had, what's, who's, what's this guy's name? Jake Gyllenhaal, who's also a, a, a monarch child. How did he come to fame? In a film called Donnie Darko, where he was seeing an imaginary rabbit. That rabbit was representative of the creature that would take him to another world. That was a manifestation. That was his, that was his E.T., Okay. Another example, the film The Matrix with Neo. He had to go down the rabbit hole after he took the red pill. This is where this is why you have the serial, right? What they call tricks. The term tricks is an abbreviation of the matrix. Okay? When you become grown, you have to leave the matrix and come into the real world. The matrix is the play world. That's why they abbreviated it to tricks. They say tricks are for kids. 
And what's the symbol of tricks? The white rabbit. Right? So LeBron James is stuck in the woke rabbit hole. He's stuck in the woke uh, matrix. He's all the way through the, through the damn hole. He's in the, he's in the matrix now. He's just caught up in there and he's desperate to get attention from Donald Trump. Whether he's going to get it or not, who the hell knows? But he's definitely down with the program. I'm going to rewind this video back just to show you. I'll let you know I ain't too far removed. And I still got a lot more work to do. And, and no matter how far money or access or how you become in life as an African-American man, female, they will always try to figure out a way to let you know that you're still beneath them. And Brothers, you see what he did there? And this is a technique that the liberal blacks like to use. I tell you about it all the time. They love to associate the plight of the so-called black man with the woman. They love to do that. They always do that. The liberal black man will always try to align himself with the woman. I'm surprised he didn't include homosexuals. Right. I did a series of videos in the past where I highlighted how Shannon Sharp incessantly tries to group the females and the homosexuals in with the plight of the so-called black man. Why is that? Because they are boule. They are the intermediary between the black masses and the white elite. Their job is to keep you off balance. Their goal is to get an even bigger hug. As, as part of the black boule, they're already getting hugs. They're getting support. Okay? LeBron James is confused. Like I said, the brother does a lot for his community. That's great. He's got a great story. But he's confused. I've already mentioned in the past... He may be a monarch athlete. The term chosen one, for those of you who don't know, the term chosen one is a term that is used for MKUltra um, assets. The higher level ones. Okay? So, it is what it is. And it's either one or two things at that point. You either cave in to that notion or you just chalk it up and say, you know what? I'm going to paint over this goddamn gate and I'm going to make it taller. Yeah. So where we Brother, give me a break. Ain't nobody spray paint your damn gate. Just stop lying so damn much. All right? Just knock it off. But let me rewind back to the part that I wanted to highlight here. All right. I'm going to see if it's right here. I believe it's here, though. Because he threw up a hand sign when he started talking about Trump. And I want to see if... You guys are going to catch it. We cannot deny that we are um, very divided, especially in the political arena. Yeah, for sure. The Warriors said, if we had an invite, we're not going to the White House. LeBron, you called the president a bum. Yeah, straight up. Straight up. How do you describe the climate for an athlete with a platform nowadays that want to talk about what's happening in our world? What well, a climate. Also, please notice Kerry Champion wearing the faux leopard print also. No, is she a MK sex kitten? Who knows? Who knows? I'm sure there's certain people out there who say she's a tranny. Um, if she was a tranny, it would not absolutely shock me, okay? But I'm not one of these people that everybody in the industry is a, is a tranny. But it wouldn't shock me. Who the hell knows? I've seen cats say that Jamel Hill is a tranny. One thing I do know about Jamel Hill is that she comes out of Michigan State. And as I mentioned in, the, in another video, Michigan State has very, very close, close ties to the CIA. Okay, they ran a project in the 60s known as the Vietnam Project, um, in which Michigan State was used as a as a cover for their training. A lot of operatives that were dispatched over to Vietnam. So it is what it is. Well, let's get back to LeBron here. Todd, the number one job in America, the point of person is someone who doesn't understand the people and really don't give a fuck about the people. When I was growing up, there were like three jobs. Now you see what he does here? And they changed the camera angle. But he throws his left hand up in the OK sign, the mudra. Which is the 666 sign. For those of you who don't know. And let, let me say this. And I'll probably do a video on this very soon. Um, I'll probably do a video on this very soon. 
I get a lot of these pro-black people who come on my videos talking about 666 is for six protons, six neutrons, and six, <laughs> six electrons. It's for melanin. Um, no. 666 is, is for carbon. And carbon and melanin are not equivalent. Melanin is a compound. Carbon is an element. All right? This is what I call uh, nigger nonsense or niggerology. It's just black people making shit up and trying to figure out a reason to worship skin color. Don't get me wrong. The component of carbon is essential to life. And yes, our people are more lively because of the higher content of carbon that we have. But no, 666 six, six, six is not, uh, in the scriptures, is not, uh, does, not, does not have anything to do with melanin. Okay? It's talking about Saturn, o, a.k.a. Molech, a.k.a. Baal, right, Kronos. That is who you fed your child to. That is the beast. Okay, that is the quote unquote antichrist or the left handed Christ, the, the Christ on the left hand. When you read the scriptures, the most I always tells you that Christ is on his right hand. Right. He says, sit down on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay, Baal, Molech, Saturn, that is the number for 666. 666 is Saturn or Latinos, the hidden one. It has nothing to do with no damn six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Now, was LeBron holding up this 666 for this long on purpose? Who knows? It's very common for that to happen. For those of you who follow um, Bill Maher's show, way back when they had the, the, the um, he had Most Def on his show. Most Def started going off about the attack on the Twin Towers. And as most Def was going off talking about how it was an inside job, Bill Maher kept throwing up the satanic hand signs. He was throwing up the uh, Manu Cornuto, and I believe he threw up the 666 to tell the viewers, those in the know, that he had everything under control. Okay? That's why they had Bill Maher do that religious nonsense, and I'll probably be doing a series on that very soon. His job is to promote chaos. He's a venerator. He's a worshiper of Pan and Bacchus, like all of them. But let's get back to LeBron here. That you look for inspiration or you feel like these were the people that can get... You see how long he held up that 666 with his left hand? And as soon as he put it down, they changed the camera angle again? Let me go back again. Um, job in America, the point of person is someone who doesn't understand the people and really don't give a fuck about the people when i was growing up there were like three jobs that you look for inspiration or you feel like these were the people that can give me life you see how you see how they changed the camera angle when he was throwing up the 666 with the left hand as soon as he took it down they switched it back little things like that brothers <laughs> that's why scriptures tell you in uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, in the twelfth verse, it says that it's a shame to speak of the things done of them in secret. Right? Starting at verse 11, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to speak of the things done of them in secret. A lot of these top athletes are actors. Okay? Or under the programming, or both assets. If this man going to sit here and still perpetuate that lie about his front gates getting sprayed with the word nigga, what else is he going to lie about that much? Because I don't care what nobody say. You're not going to tell me that that man's front gate got spray painted with the word nigga and they still have not made any arrests. That is bullshit. Every house in that neighborhood probably has damn five cameras around it. Then they change the angle after he's talking about Trump and he's throwing up the 666 with his left hand. What they call the mudra. Right, which is basically just a phallic symbol. Uh, it is what it is. Point being is this. LeBron James is looking to initiate a back and forth with Trump. Um, who knows? He's most likely jealous that Trump is giving everybody else attention except him. He's co-signing Hillary Clinton, who was a liar, a thief, uh, and, and a... A sex trafficker but he wants to talk about how how Donald Trump is separating everybody 
And it's nothing against Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant should need to sit his bony ass down. I don't want to hear what he got to say about leadership. The brother couldn't lead flies to shit. Great, great basketball player, though. All right? Once again, they have the right to speak their minds, and they have to expect people to scrutinize their statements. But anyway, peace.